time to venture outside the United States in this folding knife review by me, Nut and Fancy. Thank you so much for coming along. Much appreciated. Look at this blade. Is that not handsome? Good looking blade. Hailing from Europe, more specifically Germany, this is a Keruska Messer model SG1 designed by Jorgen Schanz. And sorry throughout the video if I get my German wrong. Probably am. But we have a lot of enthusiastic and very very loyal knife enthusiasts that follow the Nut Fancy Project. And to them I say, Allo danke Vestrusing. Allo danke Vestrusing. I know, my German sucks, no doubt. My attempt to say thanks for watching all the enthusiasm. I know, not just in Germany, all throughout Europe and the world for that matter. Great fans, very cool. Keruska Messer. Have you ever heard of that brand? American TMPers? Probably not. I know I had not. By way of introduction, Keruska Messer is, again, in Germany. And Keruska, I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, my friend, Sheepdog1987, a German TMPer, helps me with my German. Thank you very much. But Keruska was an ancient German tribe that defeated the Roman Legion around 9 or 10 AD, led by a dude named Arminus. So, warrior German tribe, Messer is blade or knife in German, is my understanding. Again, I might be wrong. Pretty cool name, though. Been in operation since 2007. It is ran by some very nice TMPers over there in Germany by the name of Christine and Dirk, her husband, Linnemeyer. And there's a nice picture of Christine. There's their starting date, 2007. A little bit of information on the inside. And they do have other knife designs. This one's called, again, I hope I get the names right, Lapu Lapu Corto. The LLC, and this is a martial arts blade. There's really a whole philosophy of use uh, in its force continuum that is to be employed and learned and practiced. There's this designer, Bram Frank. I don't have one on the table. I have a picture of it in its non lethal use there in the closed position. You can open it by whacking it on the spine, kind of cool. Uh, cool knives, nothing fancy, you love those. Well, what they are is uh, a training knife. You'd have to train to be very good with them. I'd have to use them and hold them and see, you know, if they're good. Uh, generally, this, the looks, no, do not turn me on. i got to be honest with you. They don't. Uh, but again, you know, sometimes I get a knife and I'm surprised. It surprises me. There's the Magnum version that's larger. The Tussock, that's a women's version of it. There's another one. And Durand's, that's kind of a cool blade. Maybe we'll see that again in the Nut Fancy Project. And then we get to the SG-1. That is the best looking knife of the bunch in my opinion. Okay, let's get into the details. Talking point style, POU size and weight. And in order to do this and address POU, I'm going to have to kind of skip around. Because in the catalog they say it's primarily an EDC blade. A solid EDC choice. For me, I like my EDC blades to be a little bit smaller. Maybe along the lines of the Spyderco Delica. You can see the difference in sizes. Your mileage may vary. Now, could it flex into the emergency tactical roll, nothing fancy? Uh, not as it comes out of the tin. And it doesn't come in a box. It actually comes in this very handsome presentation tin like that. And I do have two on the table. I'll tell you why here in a little bit. That's what it looks like when it comes to you. Awesome looking blade again. I'll probably say that like 30 times for the reviews done. If you modify it to give you, uh, and I'm jumping down to ergonomics here. If you modify it to gain more traction on the handle, because out of the 10, it really doesn't have much. There's no jimping top side. Uh, it's a slick stainless steel frame lock, so there's no traction on this side. G10 slab on that side, not a really deep finger guard. Uh, basically, the only way you're going to hold on to the knife in a tactical roll is by your grip, which I generally do not recommend. However, perhaps, just perhaps, if you do the Nut and Fancy skateboard tape modification on the top right there, huh? kind of transforms it. Now you have more grip on, on the top. So I'm going to go primarily with EDC, perhaps with modification, lightweight, tactical. Lightweight? Maybe not so light. This is a downside of the SG-1 design, and that's because it is a slab of stainless steel. Frame lock again, 5.8 ounces. What? 5.8 ounces. Well, in advance, we, we know you like about 4 ounce blades. That's true, unless I get something in return. And this is somewhat of a larger blade, three and a half inches in length. So that's a decent sized blade. For me, the knife is a little bit heavy. It just is. And that may drive back to the philosophy of use, EDC. Eh, 
maybe for me five let's just call it six ounces that's too heavy for me um, for a lot of guys they will love the weight the solidity that they have with the SG-1 model steel and blade shape the steel choice is interesting 17 CR 17 MOV and no I am not really familiar with that steel choice in the catalog they say it's about like OS 8 that is AUS 8 steel um, I didn't really find a composition chart, and even if I had, it probably would not mean a lot to most TMPers. Uh, they're just, they just go, okay, whatever. Well, what's the bottom line? Remember, I'm not the steels expert. I am more of a user, as I've always said in my knife reviews. Uh, maybe one day I'll do uh, more information on steels. Not now. I had to find out, though, what kind of cutting performance this, to me, unknown steel has. So I actually took the SG-1 out and did extensive cardboard cutting with it. I forget which one I used, either that one or this one. And I will say that it passed with flying colors. Great cutting performance. Was it hair shaving sharp when I got done? Nope, it wasn't. Needed resharpening, but the good news is the edge came right back. And that takes us to the blade shape of the SG-1. One of my favorite things about the knife. To me, that is just a gorgeous and useful clip blade shape. Don't you think? Hollow ground, again, we detect that by just running this direction, our fingers, about mid-spine down as a grind. And out of the tin, pretty darn sharp. It could stand to be touched up a little bit, and the good news is it responds nicely to ceramic rotting. Uh, at least it did for me. Love the blade shape on there. Great belly. That's a really sharp tip on there. Where's that tin so you can focus on it? There we go. And is it a weak tip? Uh, well, you know, mileage may vary user to user. I think it's about right. I love the sharp tip on it. The hollow grinding is pretty wicked too. Lock up and strength. For guys that do not like liner locks, maybe don't like lock backs, you might consider the SG-1. It is a very strong frame lock from all indications. Look at how that locking bar mates up on the back of the blade. Okay, and it happens on this one more or less too. Not maybe quite to the same degree. See that? good lockup and I don't detect a ton of movement in either of these SG-1s. There is some. Remember, I always keep it real with you guys. A little bit of movement side to side and I find that the pivot tension on the SG-1 is somewhat critical. It will take some fine tuning. A little bit of movement by you, the user, using your mini Torx um, driver. And by the way, that's a metric Torx, so be advised. And then I would recommend backing it out, loctiting it with blue Loctite, finding just the right pivot tension, which will give you that balance of tightness and lockup side to side, and also speed. How's the speed on SG-1? I'm gonna call it moderate. Not wicked fast, it just isn't. Because in order to get rid of all that play, I had to tighten the pivot screw up on both knives to just the right degree, and it makes a little bit of wrist action and a good thumb technique mandatory. See, I missed it on that one. There you go, and it will come out like that. Okay, so that's just what it is. Um, but the liner lock's wicked. Pillar construction, see that? With two standoffs in between the stainless steel slabs, so it will flow through any debris, mud, whatever you have going that day. I like that design. Handle material, here comes another plus on the SG-1. Handsome G10 scale. In a lot of ways, it reminds me of the previously reviewed Kershaw Barrage. Remember that one, here it is. This is the Damascus version, also a stainless steel frame lock. See that? And if you look at the back side of both these knives, very similar. And the looks are very similar. Both are handsome designs, but European design, of course. In the speed, lockup, and strength talking points, I forgot to mention the thumb stud. Um, the downside, it's a little bit rounded for me, so there's not a lot of traction on it but it's pretty much made up for in the fact that it's long enough. So it extends out from the blade enough where you can really dig your thumb fat in there, get a purchase, effect deployment, just like that. Okay, so pretty good thumb stud design. Uh, minor volcano issues, I will call them. That's when there's a terracing of the thumb stud to a bad degree on a folding knife. On the strength talking point, I have no issues with a frame lock. It seems very strong. On the pivot point, some slight issues were noted. And this will drive to the point why I have two knives on the table. I did have an SG-1 that had a Teflon washer on the pivot point kind of bend and cause problems. I don't know why. It might have been my pivoting or my pivot adjustment I was doing. Maybe it was too loose, too tight. 
At any rate, that Teflon washer screwed up and I contacted Keruska, Christine and company, and said, hey, can you send me a couple nylon washers? I'll swap them out. What did they do? They sent me two new knives. I'm like, whoa, I didn't need two knives. That's what they did. You know, was it because me, I'm a reviewer, I don't know. I think they have outstanding customer service. That's my take on it. Um, and don't slam the design too much, too, for that, because it's pretty common in a lot of designs to use Teflon washers. I do prefer phosphor bronze myself. But the Kershaw Bra Barrage, if I'm not mistaken, also uses Teflon washers. The Ontario Rat 1 does as well. Okay, so there it is. If I was smart, I probably would have just probably, uh, gone to knifekits.com, check that website out, tell them nothing fancy sent you. A lot of cool stuff there, and also knife parts too. So I probably could have just bought those Teflon washers there. Uh, this is an aside, if you have any issues with your knives, you don't want to send them to the manufacturer, which is actually recommendation number one, fix it yourself, go to knife kits, buy the part yourself, swap it out. Okay, just a couple minor issues I got to tell you about. Ergonomics overall are medium level. I'm not going to say they're outstanding for the reasons I've told you. No jimping, finger guards not d deep enough, but you can't have everything in a knife design. And to me, uh, what I view the SG1 is, uh, as is an elegant and beautiful knife, maybe a collectible. <clears throat> and again, like I've said in lots of reviews, that is a completely valid reason to own a knife. You may never employ it in the tactical role or even the EDC role. You might just collect it and enjoy, you know, holding it and fondling the knife. That's totally cool. This would be a great knife for that. I mean, the looks on this knife are home run. It looks like it should be a more expensive knife than it is. The downside is, is maybe ergonomics suffer a little bit. And to me, weight kind of comes into ergonomics because I'm thinking about the blade all the time while it's banging around in my pocket. Okay, just me, my mileage. Clip design is good. No under clip issues. That's a nicely designed clip. Let's bring that barrage back in here by way of reference by Kershaw. You can see the clip is longer and more elegant, strong, and no Wizard of Oz issues to speak of on the SG-1. Decent durability. I talked about the Teflon washer issue. I think that's kind of a minor issue. It's easily rectified even if you didn't send it back to the company, which I should have done. In other words, fix it myself. I think the durability overall will be pretty good. Oh, and I didn't talk about this. How about the blade centering? A lot of guys want to know. Pretty darn good. You can see that one is actually perfect. This one, I believe, is just a little bit off. Not much, though, and better than a lot of U.S. knife designs that I've shown on the table, don't you think? There you go. Value. A lot of guys will say, um, well, nothing fancy. That's a European blade. It's going to cost me an arm and a leg if I want it. First off, let me say this, and I'm going to get down to cool factor too. There is something cool by owning a knife that you won't find your friends having. You know, lots of Benchmade, Spydercos, Kershaws, Cold Steels out there. They're all great. I've reviewed and loved many of them. How many of your friends are going to have a German-produced Keruska Messer SG-1? By Jorgen Schanz. Not too many. And would I would you freak out if I told you that the US price, and again, I checked on this a while back. I hope I'm not off. I'm gonna ballpark it as of mid-2010. $46 US. What? That kind of changes things, don't you think? When you talk about the quality of presentation, the looks of the blade, to me it does. I think the value at that price is pretty darn high. Now keep in mind when you go to their website, the fine folks at Keruska Messer, there's their website right there. You can click on your choice of language, US, Deutschland, whatever, and then you can go, you know, change the uh, increments in the price to US dollars. There is a 19% value added tax that the Europeans pay. That will be peeled off in your checkout price. If you're an American, it's getting shipped to you. And they ship fast. Fast shipping, great customer service for a very expensive looking handsome blade. You know, are the ultimate tactical ergonomics there? No, they're not. You know, is the ultra speed there? You might be able to adjust it faster than I did. Probably not. But the knife is razor sharp, holds an edge decently. It's easy enough to resharpen and it looks good and it's strong. That is the Keruska Messer SG-1 model. And that is the Net Fancy Review. Good night for the money. Thanks, guys. Sure appreciate it. We'll see you later.